All right, good evening, folks. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. July 10th, 2025 is the date here. 10.35 p.m. California time. Latest activity still shows some movement up there across the Mount Rainier area in Washington. Uh, there across that volcano, still seeing a number of earthquakes. And in fact, I think we've, uh, well, at least on this one, come close to 400 earthquakes in the area of Mount Rainier. Most of this earthquake activity very consistent with the fluid movement and interaction with the faults there that they're talking about uh, that's stirring up this activity. No deeper observed movement uh, that would be indicative there of some, you know, some magma movement down at the deeper levels. I was just checking the uh, seismograph or the uh, GPS stations out there as well. This is on the southern flank there of Mount Rainier. No signs of any uptick. The last couple run times there, uh, fairly neutral. And this goes back to 2020. No signs of inflation going on. But, of course, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, you know, the earthquake activity is continuing, no doubt. Uh, let me show you guys here on the, on the uh, seismograph station here. It's pretty neat. Got a uh, number of earthquakes still happening. Nothing big. Let's see if I can bring that up. There we go. Uh, but it's still fairly consistent. If you really look at this here, there's, you know... There's a good hundred or so on the last 24 hours here. If we were to look at and count every single spike on this map, yeah, we could easily have a hundred. So the earthquakes are probably up in the, above a thousand range here if we uh, uh, try to um, you know count every single earthquake out here in the last four days. It's just not possible though. Uh, but I guarantee you there's a, a large amount of earthquake activity. Nothing new, nothing deep. And so far, the largest earthquake in this sequence of events there is a 2.3 uh, from yesterday and then a previous 2.3 uh, the day before. The latest quake there shows a little 0.5. Again, same level there below the uh, uh, summit area. We'll watch this, see how long this goes on. Definitely uh, surpassing the 2009 um, swarm that you know struck out here. All right, let's see what else we got here for earthquake activity around the West Coast. One earthquake up here on the Seattle Fault uh, earlier this afternoon. That uh, is 1.7, 33 miles deep there underneath this area. It's a pretty hazardous zone that runs underneath Seattle. That's capable of a mid-7. Cascadia subduction zone quiet for now. I do want to check out the trimmer map here this evening. Cascadia trimmer will show us uh, a little bit about what's going on there at the subduction zone. And uh, looks like we got about 45 epicenters of trimmer underneath the Salem area of Oregon. That's the uh, Cascadia subduction zone that's underneath. Of course, the, the uh, locked area sits offshore. The deeper you go there underneath the subduction zone, of course, you run into the volcanoes. But uh, this area, um, you know, it's been somewhat uh, active here, I think, in the last couple of days. Not a big amount. Got 207 epicenters here of trimmer mainly, uh, mainly underneath the Oregon area of the Cascadia subduction zone. A couple more earthquakes here in Northern California uh, this morning, 3.1 and a two-pointer. Bay Area pretty quiet, but once you get down south here, things are starting to kick up a little bit. Uh, one of the latest quakes, a 3.3, looks like that's uh, right at the Parkfield section and the creeping section boundary here of the San Andreas Fault. That's Technically, uh, number oh, number three or four in terms of a decent type of magnitude here across this area of the plate boundary. This one's six miles deep. Obviously, I think we're leading to possibly seeing something soon here on the San Andreas Fault, the Parkfield segment. It's coming up here for at least a six-pointer. It's got these regular reoccurrence intervals of 20 to 22 years. And the last one was 2004, so here we are. Getting uh, some noticeable earthquake activity up north here, just right at that intersect or the uh, that uh, boundary there between the creeping segment and the Parkfield segment here to the south. Parkfield segment pretty quiet for now. Uh, further down south here, got ourselves a little bit of earthquake activity and a, and a slight little swarm out here, just off the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment here, uh, where a three-pointer struck earlier uh, this ap late afternoon. That followed well, basically. That earthquake activity followed a three-pointer, 3.7 over here. They actually updated that uh, 3.7 around the Brego Springs area. One minute later is when we had the three-pointer over here. So we do have some adjustment going on there that is affecting the area of the plate boundary, that strain being transferred right off of it, 
Got to watch that area there. Over 300 years since we've seen any major rupture activity on that extreme southern segment. Uh, so some swarming going on here. Whether you want to call it aftershock activity, uh, I guess it could be considered aftershock activity. A number of ones in there as well. Uh, some movement up north here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone, one of the more recent quakes. But, uh, you know, definitely watch it. Definitely uh, seen some more activity out here. A couple threes here in one day is a little bit above the average background levels here for the Southern California region. Uh, up into Nevada, a couple earthquakes here this morning. It looks like nothing big. Uh, Yellowstone National Park here. We got... Uh, a 2.7 earthquake being recorded there. Let's see what we got. That's fairly recent. So those earthquakes that occur at Yellowstone National Park, if they're above 2.5, they automatically get uh, automatically get added here to the map. Let's see if it's been reviewed yet or not. Uh, it has been reviewed, so that's a legit earthquake. And as you can see here, that struck... Um, a little bit further down south here. Maybe a little bit of swarming going on there, it looks like, across that area. Uh, that 2.7 is definitely going to show up across the working seismograph stations out here uh, for the most part because that's, uh, you know, it's definitely going to show up out here. There's, it looks like there was another earthquake of a smaller magnitude some minutes later. But as far as any uh, major swarms go there at Yellowstone, nothing big going on there. Just a little 2.7 south here. That's probably going to be around the southern end of the Yellowstone supervolcano caldera down here. Uh, out and about, uh, let's see what else we have here. Texas oil fields, nothing new there. It's always rocking and rolling, folks. I want to show you guys the last 30 days here. Check this out. How's nine? Well, zoom in strictly to Texas. 823 earthquakes here in the last 30 days. Man, one would think, what's going on out there? Well, that's very common. And it's been common ever since the oil boom out here. So uh, earthquakes and oil fields, they go hand in hand. Uh, nothing new to report there across the New Madrid seismic zone. Guatemala down here, uh, nothing new to report as uh, far as newer activity goes. Let's see what we got here on the earthquake 3D globe. Still looks like we're seeing a swarm, although it looks like it's backing off a little bit with a little bit of migrational pressure up north. That's what we're seeing, that uh, those three-pointers there in Southern California right now, or throughout the last 12 hours. Uh, some newer activity down south here across the Peru-Chile Trench as well with a number of fours. The latest, a 3.7. Uh, not a whole lot going on there across Puerto Rico, but uh, there's, there's some movement up there around the Puerto Rico Trench. Got uh, some earthquake activity up here. Some down here across the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico uh, with a little bit of two magnitude movement. Uh, 4.6 earthquake here. Looks like uh, maybe starting to kick up around the Japan area again. Let's go ahead and check out the latest information here from the uh, Japan Meteorological Agency. Uh, yeah, looks like maybe we are starting to kick up a little bit. I would say definitely re returning back to about 10 earthquakes or so each hour. I did, I did kind of state here that we should see and watch for that. The pressure kind of goes round and round here across the plate boundaries. Once we pretty much lock in here, we'll see swarms kick back up. And it does look like uh, we're starting to see that return as of, let's see when it really kicked up here. Looks like about the 5 o'clock time period here. 1701, we got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 earthquakes just in that hour alone. In the 6 o'clock time period, roughly about the same. Maybe a little bit more, actually. There's a lot more, if you think about it. Maybe 15 or 20 there. And then uh, maybe even over 20. Look at that. This, I'm looking at this timestamp here. Bunch of earthquakes kicking back up. 4.4, bunch of threes in there as well. So this earthquake swarm there, Japan has officially restarted. With, uh, you know, it, man... We got uh, probably at least 100 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours. Again, it started, really started to ramp up here uh, just um, around the 5 o'clock time period. So uh, watch for that. I know the USGS here only showing one earthquake here of a 4.6 magnitude, roughly um, in the mix of that uptick of earthquake activity out there. It's definitely uh, stirring up here. And this is the adjacent sea of the Tukara Islands. If you look here on the map, Shows you exactly 
uh, where this earthquake swarm is continuing. They're off the Nankai Trough, definitely in full swing right now once again with a, a number of earthquakes out there. That's uh, not going to really show up here on the US or on the uh, USGS map on the Earthquake 3D Globe. It does look like things are being reported there. That is good. I do like to see the uh, reporting of those smaller quakes here in the three range across that area. So the swarm officially has uh, continued there across the area. We'll continue to watch that. Got a lot of potential there across the Nankai Trough. Uh, some movement out here across the Java Trench. A decent sized earthquake out there in the Indian Ridge 5.0. This is spreading seafloor center. Uh, somewhat similar there to the Atlantic Ridge. Spreading apart slowly but surely. That uh, is a decent earthquake there, five-pointer. New Zealand, uh, some movement north into the Kermadec Trench, but southward pretty quiet there. Still leaving a, a gap zone here of quiet activity across Papua New Guinea eastward. But uh, looks like we've migrated movement up north here. Let me see what we got. The seismograph station out there looks quiet for now. The Kagoshima or Kagoshima station here. That's the one very close to the earthquake swarm there in Japan. I don't see anything stirring up on it for now. So we'll watch this overnight, but uh, definitely has stirred back up. Uh, some movement out there around Turkey. And um, it looks like a 3.3 .3 out there in the, uh, the border of Turkey. A couple earthquakes out there around the Mediterranean. Nothing big going on for now. Take a look here at space weather activity. Um, still somewhat into the sea flare category. I know a lot of people talking about this massive coronal hole, but it's really not all that impressive, <laughs> to be honest. I've seen bigger ones out here in the last several months. Uh, this one's got a little bit of length to it, but it's a very thin area of high-speed solar wind stream. So I'm really not expecting much from that. This area down here, if it was more north uh, center disk of the sun, then yes, we'd be talking about some high-speed high solar wind stream hitting the planet. And that could, you know, obviously stir up some auroras, but I'm not really counting much on that uh, little uh, setup right now. Uh, we do have uh, 4136 over here. That is a, uh, a sunspot of interest. I don't see anything that would tell me that it's capable of producing any X flare activity, but it is capable here of M flare movement. Watch that. Also, a newer area back here creeping around the southeastern limb of the sun. That, uh, at least for now, looks a little bit of complexity within those uh, colors there. We'll get a little bit better view of it uh, tomorrow. Uh, so the flare threat right now, 35% chance for M flare. X flare around 1%, 90% chance there for C flare activity. Nothing major going on there for the auroras for now and just shy of a full moon uh, up there in the uh, beautiful sky. Nighttime sky. All right, Storm Prediction Center here for severe weather. Uh, a little bit of thunderstorm activity out there across the central plains for tonight. Uh, a little 2% chance for some tornado activity, mainly around Iowa. Um, portions of Illinois included in Nebraska over there as well. But uh, I don't see anything major going on for the remainder of the night. For tomorrow, for the day on Friday, we start the weekend. I can't believe it. It's already Friday coming up. Got a slight risk added here across areas of the Great Lakes southwestward. Little 2% chance there for some tornado activity. Wind, a little bit of hell threat. Main threat looks to be some wind damage out there. So we'll check back on that in, t in the uh, morning update, see if they add anything on there. All right. Uh, yeah, seismograph stations out there pretty quiet for now. Keep an eye on Southern California. I mean, it's interesting here. Southern California is kind of ramped up roughly about the same time that Japan's kicked up here. So we do have quite a bit of pressurization going on here across the Western Pacific, as well as the Eastern Pacific here, which includes the San Andreas Fault. I'll definitely watch that. All right, folks, have yourself a wonderful evening. We'll see you guys back out here for the Friday morning update. Take care.